Geek Public Radio right here on geekpublicradio.com. I'm Topher, and with me, as usual, is Crazy Chris. Uh, bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> bonjour. Bonjour. How the heck are you, buddy? I'm doing okay. I was laughing so hard at what the stuff we're going to talk about today. Yeah, it's been a. It's it's. it's, it's I don't fun. even want to call it a roller coaster because it's really not. A lot of the stuff we are not, we haven't looked into because we were just told about it, and mm-hmm. we're going along with everybody else. Um. So first, let's get into it. Hold on, hold on. I just want to preface this show and for everybody's excitement. We may, in fact, have a brand new contender. It's still early in the year, (laughs) but Geek Public Radio's coveted Golden Dumpster Fire Award. (laughs) We got a we got a new contender putting their putting their hat right in the ring right to start the year, man. I'm excited about this. Let's get into this today. All right. So Skull and Bones release date. Gameplay and all the new uh, Skull and Bones finally released, and this is according to Tech Radar. Uh, Skull and Bones finally released February 16th after years of delays and major changes to the game's core focus. Skull and Bones, you start off as a shipwrecked pirate and build your way up to a pirate legend. There are missions to take on, hubs to visit, plenty of ship customization. And uh, the game scope and vision has drastically changed since its first reveal. This is uh, they're going through everything that you need to know and, and all of this stuff. Yeah, basically, this game is super duper awesome, and you should buy it because of all this cool stuff you can do. I think mean, it's been, like I said, it's been eleven <laughs> years in the thing. Eleven uh, freaking years. Yeah, the this the, better be the best game ever. It showed off the trailer for Skull and Bones during the Game Awards and uh, this year. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a gameplay deep dive detailing naval. And I'll be honest, I was excited. I was excited about this game. Well, let's watch. I'll show the, you why I was excited. Yeah, let's watch the trailer right here. And go. <laughs> Look how cool that looks. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> We were nothing. It's very much a Dark Our Sails black flag. By the fat cats well, Dark Sails also had that stone statue oh, yeah, of yeah. all of them. Oh, the... you're talking about the star show, right? Yeah. So we chased our dreams on the lawless seas. Little did they know. I mean, visually, it's stunning. I mean, the commercial looks great. Yeah. And live on our knees. That's where we scratched and clawed our way to anything and everything. Ooh, you can customize your logo. That's cool. Free to carve I, our this is destiny. I mean, that's the little stuff that I like to do. And all those that stand in our way. Make their corpses rot at the death of the ocean. I do have to say, like, those kind of battles were my favorite part of Black Flag. Yo, for sure. That world was never ours. But we took it anyway. Water, I mean, seriously, like, the water, the weather, all that looks great. Out here. We are the kings. Nah, not today, homie. I mean, that's, yeah, that, that not, looks see, pretty conceptually, pretty cool. conceptually, this game should be the greatest game that has been released. I mean, especially if you're a black flag lover like I am. I am too. Yeah. 
right. Okay. So that. Is the uh, that's the launch trailer? The launch trailer. So what else? I mean, we have a review already coming in mm-hmm. from Geek Culture. They did a review. It says, "What do uh, they have to say?" I'm uh, curious. After after eleven years of development, Skull and Bones is supposed to be the answer to many hopeful gamers' prayers for a new modern pirate themed open world game. Hmm. A uh, lot of a lot of cool things in that yeah. sentence. However, like many shifts during the golden age of privacy, this belongs in Davy Jones' locker. There it is, <laughs> and it's suitable only for a very select few group of gamers. Okay, I may find myself in that select that select few. Sure, select few because I am one that I like rust. I don't like the PVE side of it. I like building shit. We're not. We haven't drowned yet. Yeah. Basically, we haven't drowned. We're we're perfectly fine being that in that niche group. Yeah. Um, so anyway, a mini open world RPG style games with dramatic event filled with high level equipment, uh, only leave you marooned with a dire predicament. The ship you were a crew member of has sunk after an intense naval battle and you gain consciousness and you find yourself floating on driftwood as your character leans over. Uh, you catch a view of yourself in a puddle of water. It's time to create your character. So that's the opening. Okay. Um, basic tutorials to go through, like customizing all of the stuff, like body marks and all of that stuff. You get into all of that. Um, at its most basic, uh, Skull and Bones is a vehicle-based RPG where your time will be spent on three types of engagements. Questing, crafting, customization, and combat. Okay. Doesn't sound bad. Yeah, so far, so far I'm in. Right. They got me hook, line, and sinker since we're using freaking nautical <laughs> puns. Questing improves the most tedious or questing proves the most tedious, crafting and customization the most creative, and combat the most exciting. Okay, that's so a that's that a high kind of, tide wave right there, yeah, like that. Kind of hits all of it's like sometimes you feel like I I just want to do the tedious. Sounds like of, like quests. sounds like typical movie making right yeah, now. Like, we're we're on pacing issues. Yeah, it's like oh well, well no, it's like sometimes <laughs> you want to just just to quest and be brainless and do the stuff. Yeah. Sometimes you want to get into the combat and really have the meaty stuff. And then other times you want to just sit back. Listen, and the, the, my favorite and... part about Black Flag was like, like creating my ship, <laughs> decking it out, and then just running, running the waves and being like, "Ooh, victim!" <laughs> <laughs> and singing sea shanties as you go. Through. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so uh, neither, uh, so you move around Skull and Bones in two ways: uh, your avatar on foot, or on board the vessel. Uh, on the high seas. As a human, you travel around one of two locations, pirate dens or pirate outposts. Okay. Now, apparently that's it. So uh, you get pirate dens and pirate. So there's not, you, you can't like explore islands and. I, I, oh, I apparently not. Okay. Dens are the larger hub worlds where you find your typical NPC run shops, your mailbox, contract boards. Uh, Etc. Outposts are smaller world hubs where you find one or two NPC trader merchants, often a treasure box and some pick pickable loot, and both serve as fast travel locations. Uh, Which okay. is kind of similar, I guess, where you make sure at at like in Black Flag, you, you put to shore in in various locations, yeah. and you can go through the town and do all of that stuff, and you can travel just outside of town where you find buried treasure and maps. Sure. And, all of that stuff. So I can see that that's um, definitely borrowed heavily from their other game. Right. Uh, your ship is where you will do the real exploring, engage in the game's combats, offering as a naval vessel, you'll have free reign to sail wherever you want. Sailing along the coast will provide chances to harvest resources used for crafting upgrades and buffs, or you can follow the marked out trade routes on your map, the chance to raid vessels for their supplies. Okay. Supplies, <laughs> which is what you have to yell when you raid them. <laughs> right. What are you guys doing? Supplies. <laughs> uh, uh, to be used in crafting and upgrades. Sailing okay. further out will give you a chance for larger encounters, more dangerous vessels. Yada yada yada. Okay. It's got a GTA style wanted system. Like literally, it's instead of like stars. Like the more you you thank you, the more you you bag ships and whatnot, the higher your skull and crossbones. Oh, go clever! So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, guys, we can't do stars because GTA already did that. 
Oh, oh, how a skull of crossbones. Oh, dude, Davey, you're onto something. Ramming is it's also a useful pun. mechanic. With the right angle and amount of speed, you'll be able to engage a rather brutal form of vehicular melee combat. You board vessels. Oh, yeah, don't ever present your flank to a to a ramming ship. That's just terrible. Uh, boarding your, vessels, your which will port. earn you extra loot, is a matter of timing and button presses. So it's like the other, like you have to get it in the right spot. Okay, now we can board. Yeah. Oh, we got to do this, yada, yada, yada. That's, that's all fair. It, I mean, it's a ship. Right. You have to have, you know, it, it wouldn't be a UB, an Ubisoft game without quick time events. So. Right. Uh, ripping it, ripping an enemy cell is possible uh, to stall them in the water, but it seems to be the only element of the contextual deconstru- uh, destruction and game and damage modeling. So, like, you can't, you don't see, like, the ships getting damaged and worn that's down. That's stupid. The sh- the the sails will get ripped and 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 that's dumb. And, and whatnot. That's dumb. I'm nope. Sorry, nope. <laughs> so far, so far off to a bad start. <laughs> uh, uh, immediately, here. that's an issue for me. If uh, I'm shooting you with cannons, if I've just unloaded forty cannon like on the Queen Anne, and I've literally hit you with a starboard barrage, and I don't see holes in your ship, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> Well, I mean, and not only honest, that, but everybody see, that's fired those cannons, I'm going to fire them. You didn't out of see, the cannon. You didn't see <laughs> holes in the ships really in Black Flag. But there were still. The, I mean, that was like the what, ship would be on 11, fire. Eleven years ago, it was a long so. time ago. Yeah. yeah, but the ships would still be on fire, and then like pieces of the ship, like when it sank, like it would snap in half and it would sink. Right. So I mean, so but I don't it, know if it was what happens when they when they when yeah. they go down. Um, the uh, beauty of the game world, you know, is a saving grace is the beauty of the game world. While not perfect, there are definitely moments of the occasional pop in and low poly model models. Um, there are times when you find yourself surrounded by absolutely breathtaking moments. You find yourself sailing under a sparkling Milky Way, watching shooting stars whiz by as your crew sings sea shanties. Hey, Good. we got the sea shanties. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, there's a positive. Okay, so far there's two. The creativity and the and the sea shanties yeah. in a language not often of your own. Absolutely thrilling, enthralled by the entire scene. But most of these beauties are had along with other in-game exp- experiences. You know that okay. they say makes the game feel half baked. Um, I'm, that's fair. Well, do you remember when we played Valheim? Yes. In the very first time we loaded in, and you look straight up and you see that skybox. Like the best part about the that the graphics for that entire game was yeah, the you just you box. looked up and you're like whole I mean like it everything was else mesmerizing, looked like, dude it, everything else looked like a generic Unity game yeah hundred percent and then you which look was up, okay because of you, the way it presented itself yeah it then you look up yeah. and it's like oh wow like holy crap there's where your budget went <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah just an incredible skybox so I mean but I, I, I'm gonna say that to say this. Looking up at the Valheim skybox, knowing how much production and energy went into Valheim, which is a great game. Right. I absolutely love Valheim. It's beautiful in the terms of how it's presented, the way the crafty mechanics work, mm. combat, things like that. It's very crisp. It's a very well put together game. So when I say what I'm about to say, understand that it comes from a place of honest criticism, but from a place of love. Knowing the amount of money that went into Valheim and what they were able to do with the budget they had and seeing that they were still able to render such a beautiful skybox makes me go, okay, Ubisoft, I'm glad you got a pretty skybox, but that's not really hard to do. Or well, it's I mean, not like that even like rendering out what well, they're talking about is like when you you go by these uh, really gorgeous looking islands and you have the the Milky That's Way cool. and you have the I can't the explore ocean. them apparently. Yeah. I'm not allowed to right. explore them because apparently I can only go to pirate hubs and pirate dens or whatever, which is uh, whatever. That is a um, I'm drowning in disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the hope of character dialogue options uh, comes crashing down when you realize there's no meaningful bearing on the game. Okay. The lack of your character's own voice is eerie. Not really. Mm, yeah, I I play games like Legend of Zelda. I'm used to not hearing my character right. do anything other than, ah, yeah, and stuff like that. So. And yet the amount of conversations you have to have, uh, you have to have to purchase something or conversations and cutscenes where you have to watch 
to watch on a quest to craft new a new cannon is simply battlefield. I uh, see. Like I said, that's not going to be like coming up. I don't know how many games we you have where you literally come up, they talk to you, and yeah. then you have a choice here, and then they respond to the choice. You don't hear your voice. Yeah, uh, so, which is again, I Fallout, Skyrim. You don't right. get to hear your character's voice. Now, it could be argued that in Fallout Four, especially. Um, you hear Nate and Nora in the very beginning, depending on what you choose to do. Well, no, I guess at the very beginning. No, let me like, scratch that whole thing completely because they do. You're actually allowed. You can actually change your voice. So never mind that is, they're fully voiced actors. I apologize. Uh, Skyrim so, is not. <laughs> so it says, uh, remember, this is 11 years in development. OK, the mechanics feel dated and confused Can't stress and, that enough. <laughs> and there is a sore lack of innovation. Few interesting in innovations it does offer of time based prices of goods. The concentration of resources to certain trade routes are simply not enough to make a valuable full purchase, full price purchase. It's doubtful that even a stellar live service offering will be able to smooth out the, the overall structure of the game. So unless you're a diehard naval fan, naval combat game fan, or someone who certainly who is certain to play with your friends, we'd advertise steering clear of this one. However, they gave it a review of six out of ten. Which is average. Yeah. I mean a little bit better than average. Right. I which mean, is if a, you which go is a by far... U.S. grading scale, it's still an F. But... Right. <laughs> and uh, to put it bluntly, I expected more from a quadruple A title. Yeah, no, they, they keep saying it's a quadruple A title. It's a quadruple A title. A title. In fact, <laughs> let's hear, <coughs> we're not really the ones known It sounds give... an awful lot to me just based on the description that, what was that geek, not geek, right, a geek review? It was geek culture. Geek culture, rather. The geek culture review. Um, it sounds an awful lot like Ubisoft couldn't withstand the tide. <laughs> well, if you don't want to listen to us, let's talk. Let, let's let's throw it to somebody who has more clout. Uh, clout in it, yeah, clout yeah. when it comes to um, giving reviews. Let's see to game. Very curious now. Oh no, Skull and Bones. <laughs> I actually had a sponsor to play this game. Um, I don't right now. I, I think that like for some reason, I, I I wonder if they saw the video and they were unhappy about it. Apparently that's not happening anymore. I don't know if it's because of my video or not. Uh oh. <laughs> Quadruple A. It's four. <laughs> okay, so this is the combat. <clears throat> well, he's winning on the, the war of attrition here. I think he's actually <laughs> that looks be able to awful. Kill it. Yeah, right. Quadruple Boring. After literally five minutes Wait, of this. What? So every mini game is just a timing mini game. Is okay, this cool. game worth seventy dollars? Wow. I think that if you really like pirate games, maybe. I don't know if it's because of my video or not. Um, no hand-to-hand -hand combat, no cutlasses, no blunderbusses, no weapons. Wow. PvP only if the other player has it enabled. You can't walk on your own ship. You can't anchor your ship anywhere. You can only dock in predetermined locations. You wow. can't swim. It's Yo Hover. Quadruple what wow. yo hover. This is the first quadruple A game. Triple A A A A A piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> the internet is undefeated. The internet is and will always remain undefeated. It's undefeated against us. It's undefeated against everyone. It is oh, right. It is gosh. The okay. Let's talk about the no swim mechanic, okay? The no blunderbuss, no PV, no hand-to-hand -hand combat. That was the fun part of, like, how are they doing boardings? Right. If, if you can't shoot people and, and swing swords and do all of that other stuff, how like, can... If you get boarded, you just lose? I... I do we get... Okay. Like, God. So there's we, a free trial or something in this game, right? Um, it's... Because we're just going to... At this point, I feel like we're just going to have to play it because... They're, there's there's oddly, no way it's this bad. Oddly enough, according to uh, Gaming Bible, Assassin's Creed publisher drops major free download. Okay. Uh, apparently, they are because nobody is interested in this. They are offering an eight hour free, <laughs> an eight hour free trial of the game. Okay. So we can we can strap up the boots. We can put on our best vest. 
Um, apparently not load the blunderbuss because <laughs> we don't get to use it. So there's no point in bringing it. Um, oh, we saw you been brought in. <laughs> we can don our pirates hats for whatever, eight hours. We, we got to try it. Uh, there's <sighs> 11 freaking years, man. How can right. you justify and, and, and charging and people like $70? Yeah, $70 for the vehicular combat. It's literally half of Which Black apparently Flag. is not even good. It's like half of Black Flag. They like took out all of the other part of Black I, Flag and just left that, bar, that can part. I, I, I'm going to use it as an example here. Uh, the Guinness Book of World Records, which was actually overtaken by uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2, uh, which is now at like 15 years and change. But before that, Duke Nukem Forever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to harken back to the other trash heap. <laughs> Of a game, um, which, by the way, just to throw this out there, Duke Nukem Forever wasn't all that horrible. It was just dated. Well, a yeah, lo- a because lot of it, it took dated. so long to do it. Yeah, that it came out with stuff from yeah and when was, they started. Right. And it was so overhyped on top of that, like everybody was waiting, anticipating this game. And I, maybe maybe uh, Skull and Bones is going to suffer from the same fate. Right. Um Maybe Calypso could come and just wash away all the stain of Ubisoft's <laughs> skull and bones. But Duke Nukem well, Forever, 14 why, years. This is why you will not own the physical copy. Yeah. <laughs> you will only. And in this particular case, I'm actually kind of thankful for that. Um, maybe Ubisoft can come and take it back from me if I were to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but Duke Nukem Forever, 14 years and 44 days, which at the time was the Guinness Book of World Records, the longest game in development. OK, not something to be proud of. Um, but when it came out, it was not good. It was 14 years out of date. Right. It was not great. Um, Skull and Bones, while visually, I, I will say visually impressive, um, as it should be using the technology that we have now. I right. mean, basically, you can say that about any game, which is, again, why I'm a Nintendo fanboy for life, because they take they take the idea that the game has to be the best graphics and they just they're like, no, screw that. It's stupid. It has to have the best story. Best story or the best gameplay or the, yeah. or crisp mechanics uh, has to play well. Things like which is why video games like Legend of Zelda and even the Mario games, Super Mario Odyssey is just an incredible game it, in its scope, its scale, its size. And apparently the new 3D game is going to be three times larger than Odyssey, which I'm like, hell yeah, let's go. Um, and there's apparently a delay about that. Maybe we'll bring that up at some other video. But this focus that these triple a developers have or quadruple a yeah, developers quadruple a quadruple a develop that they have on these video games to make them so visually stunning and i'm, I'm like great that's cool but again i'm going to use valheim or v rising as an example visually these are not the most stunning games that i've ever seen in my life they, they're not visually well, v rising actually has a really cool it looks cool the aesthetic uh, of the re- game is really yeah, neat. really cool design style i like i like the aesthetic of it but i can see the same type of graphics in diablo 3 right well it kind of has breaking new ground it kind of has that whole almost a survival adaptation of a metroidvania a little bit yeah because of the way you have to to do certain things which right. uh, which i like i think it's cool but at the same time, so uh, the, and especially the lighting effects, I will give I will give you rising all the credit in the world because the lighting effects in that game are like on oh, yeah. point. If you're standing in a shadow, no matter how small you're standing in shadow. <laughs> and I love that. Right. They, they're very good with the hit detection. Right. If you miss a shot, it's because you missed. Like, I, I like that about the game. But what I'm saying is graphically, I don't think that it I, it did not tread break new ground at all. No, not at all. Um, Valheim, same thing. I mean, hell, look at Minecraft, man. It's pixelated blocks. Right. But people still play it, still play it to this day. And the hallmark, the benchmark really for for gameplay, you know, you can go all the way back to Super Mario 64 or Super Mario Brothers 3. They were not. Sonic was better, had better graphics. Right. But Super Mario 3 killed it in every category. Just it just killed it. Did it have better sound? No. Did it have better graphics? No. Did it have better pacing? No. None of those things are true, <laughs> but what it had was gameplay, crisp mechanics, consistency, right? Difficulty spikes, things like that. So looking back on that, like there's blueprints for how to develop a game. There's blueprints on how to present a game. You have the entire model for your game in Black Flag. You have the entire model for it, yeah. but you lost everything that was freaking fun. Pull out the Assassin's Creed aspect of the thing. Yeah. And you have a great pirate game. You literally yeah, absolutely. You run around and, and do all of the and stuff. And you can on do pirate the- things. Literally just get rid of the, the this, exactly get rid of the Assassin's Creed moniker 
let me run. Like I'm a pirate. I'm not always going to be on my ship. Hell, 90% of piracy wasn't even done on board a vessel. No, like you park <laughs> over here and then sneak into this camp. Give me an opportunity a to bribe a government official. Like, give me gameplay. Give yeah. me something. I should be able to walk into a town where the local mayor is being a corrupt piece of crap on an island somewhere, taking advantage of some native population. And I should be able to walk up to him and be like, here, dude, here's 50 freaking gold. Allow me to operate in your waters with impunity. And by the way, cool. Now I get an in-game bonus. Like, this is me off the top of my head. Right. I get an in-game bonus. That as long as I'm in those territorial waters, that I have the support of the local government, which means if you come and attack me, oh, I get a plus five bonus to my attack or I get a plus five bonus to my defense or, or whatever it is. Yeah. Or there's a chance that somebody comes in. Yeah. Or there's a chance that a government ship is going to wander by and just blow you away because you've right. got the wrong flag on. Right. Dude, you know how easy that is? Do you know how simple a mechanic <laughs> like that would be to implement in a game? Right. Like that's top of my head. I'm not a video game developer. I'm not even a storyboard designer. I'm not even a fucking play tester. But how hard was that for me to come up with an idea and go, that would be a really cool thing to implement in a freaking pirate game. Or, oh, here's one. I don't know. Maybe I can actually have my own little pirate hovel where I store all a whole bunch of fucking tea yeah. that I stole. And then you literally get to add the aspect of not only customization of building your ships, building your own base. Building your own base. Right. Duh. That's when you nail me. I get a pirate cove. Like, oh, OK, well, I can now I can go. OK, you know I want to build this space I, to do this. I know people and... hate this game, but how about we take things from Fallout 76, which made it successful, right? You have a bunch of different servers. There's only eight people on the server at any point in time. Right. Or a perpetually generated map since you decided to skimp on allowing me to explore. <laughs> Give me a perpetually generated or a uh, yeah, perpetually generated well, map. Well, it's an open world, so you can go, go everywhere, anywhere. You just can't land. You just can't land. Right. But that's my entire point. But it's not going to there's going to be a there's a scale of the world. There's a there's a limit to how far it can go. But my point is, even if it's the same map, limit the amount of players that are available on any given map, just like Fallout 76 well, did. See, and then I can build my base how I want. Right. But they're tagging the thing of like you need to find people to play with. So the more people you're playing with in your armada of pirate ships, you can do more cooler and, and, and bigger which things. is totally fine. Give me some storyboard elements that allow me to do that. And maybe the game does. I don't know. We haven't played it all the way through. But my point well, we being, played it, if but. I can take or right what I'm sorry, but we haven't played it at all. But what I'm saying is give me things like I can take all the tea or all the coffee or all the sugar cane. I literally hoard it mm. and I drive. I artificially drive the price of those freaking things up and then sell it back at a profit, right. which is exactly what piracy was. I don't know. Maybe that for fuck's sake. It's not hard to do. Ubisoft is a fucking train wreck. I'm sorry. I keep dropping the F-bomb, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Demonetize us. I don't even give a crap at this point. It is such a train wreck of a company that they would make people wait 11 years for this hotly anticipated triple quadruple A title and then take a steaming dump on yeah. your chest. Literally give and us then tell half, you to like it. Literally give us half of the game. Yeah, that they gave us with with Black Flag. They basically took a crap in front of you, rubbed your nose in it, and said, "Yeah, you like that, don't you?" <laughs> like on that note, good grief. <laughs> on that note, God dang it, Matt Booty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's. Involved. You know what? Nope, we're blaming him. <laughs> on that note, my name is Topher. I'm Crazy Chris, and we will see you guys in the next video. Don't be a booty. Beep.